a metro columnist is a critter that evolved out of newspapers as we have known them. Um, Mike Royko being the classic example of the metro columnist. The guy, almost always used to be a guy, the guy who lives in the city, the guy who knows the cops and the firefighters and drinks and you know, gets at the gritty city, um, sometimes is funny, sometimes makes you cry, sometimes writes about politics, sometimes writes about, in my case, the centipede in my bathtub. Um, you know, so, so that model has been around for, for a while, but as newspapers move online, what I'm sensing is it's very hard to figure out where to put an old-style metro columnist in a digital publication. So the pressure is even greater than it used to be, I think, for columnists to find their niche. This is not new, but I, I sense that it's accelerating. So that you need to be either the liberal columnist, the conservative columnist, the parenting columnist, the feminist columnist, the food columnist. I, I, th I, think it's, I think it's getting harder just in terms of trying to figure out where do you put this on a website, this old fashioned, I write about everything because we all think about everything column. Yeah. I really love it all. I mean, I love going out into the city. I love trying to explore, not in a touristy way, but in a really kind of psychological way, what is going on in, in the neighborhoods and finding the stories that allow those subtle things to be told. But I also like just writing the, you know, gosh, it's spring and the leaves are coming back on the trees. If you live in California, you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but if you live in a cold place, you know that there comes a time every year when that is the only thing that people are really thinking about. They are not thinking about politics. They are looking out their window and going, oh my god, I think that leaf is about to happen. <laughs>